Hello everybody, it's Katie and I have some things to complain about. Today I want to talk to you about my fantasy pet peeves. These are some things that I encountered so often or that I noticed a lot lately that they really, really start to piss me off. Like really, they start to annoy me like a lot. I've got seven pet peeves because everyone knows that's the magical number. Um, however, I would like to say, like the usual disclaimer, these are my opinions. If you have different opinions, good for you. We are both, you know, humans. So let's ent interact, you know, with respect towards each other. Please, thank you. Also a disclaimer, I'm about to rant. Let's just get right into it, okay? So number one is the convenient magical solution, especially if it wasn't introduced before. I have read this, I feel like I've read this a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand times. And you know, I love the Harry Potter series, but the Harry Potter series is guilty of this as fuck. No offense, JK. Um, I just hate that. Like, magic is no, it's no problem solver, okay? Like, you can't just invent something, like you can't you can't throw your protagonists into a super tense, super dangerous situation and just magically pull something out of thin air and everything's okay again. Like, no, I hate that. You know, like, okay, give your protagonist a set of skills and then let them fight for themselves. And if they die, then maybe change your set of skills that you give them or change your you know, or change the dangerous situation to something that is not as dangerous. Number two, distances don't mean anything, especially, I've encountered this one, especially in later books of a series. And you know, the Game of Thrones show is guilty of this. It, it means basically when in the beginning you have a party of people that are taking their sweet time to travel from A to B and it encounter various adventures on their way and that is basically the book. And then in later books when you um, have all of your people set up in different locations and you need someone pop up at a different location but you can't go through the whole process of that person you know, taking the journey and being on the way for about 10 months or something and suddenly they just magically appear everywhere and they're basic, basically, you know, <laughs> having that Star, Star Trek transport that, you know, they just, I don't know, just appear out of thin air and, and it annoys me so much. No, get your distances right, damn it. Okay, number three, people learning or mastering new shit in a very, uh, very little amount of time or in the face of death. I hate that. I hate that. And <laughs> like, okay, what I mean with that is, I'm pretty sure you all know what I mean with that, is when someone you know, instead of, you know, when, when there is something that people are, that people in this book are saying like, oh, that it needs so much time to train this particular thing. And then our protagonist just magically can learn whatever that is, like sword fighting or magic or something like that within a, over a span of a few weeks. And other people, you know, regular people that are not the protagonist need, I don't know, years to master that. Or if the protagonist is threatened and then he just um, discovers this new skill of swords fighting that he, he or she does, didn't have before. And is just now, you know, coming through the surface because our protagonist is in danger for his life or her life. I hate it. I mean, I hate it. I mean, at least Harry Potter had to go to Hogwarts for six years. Number four pet peeve that annoys me a lot is the unnecessary information. Oh no, and I messed up my lipstick again. Go me. Um, unnecessary information, especially in the form of an info dump. And yeah, I get it. I get it. 
you invented this world, you invented a lot of backstory to all the minor characters. I get it, you invented the whole history of this magical world. The questions that I ask myself is, you know, especially since I'm writing a fantasy novel myself at the moment, the question that I'm asking myself is always, do people need to know this? Does it serve the purpose? If the answer is no, leave it out. Yeah, it will shorten your book, but it, it, like, <sighs> if I have to read the entire history of a magical kingdom again and it doesn't matter in the end, I'm going to scream. I, <sighs> I mean, I'm a busy lady, okay? I, I don't have time to read 1000 pages of exposition. Okay, just get that plot going. And number five is something that the paper magician is very guilty of. And that is, the whole story evolves around a magic system or um, the magical system is used as a plot device to, to drive, you know, the plot forward. And the <laughs> paper magician is the number one example for that. This whole trilogy <laughs> just exists because the author probably had an idea for this wow, wonderful magical system. And, but not, not a good idea for a plot or characters. And now we have the Paper Magician trilogy, which I hate, by the way. The more I think about it, the more I hate it. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, not the point. <laughs> the next one is a good one. Pet peeve number six is people being transformed into a elf, fairy, vampire, insert magical creature here, um, to heal their disabilities or to compensate for being a human, because being a magical, magical creature will solve all your problems, you will be super strong, you will have magic and you can kick ass. Um, and I hate that trope! I just hate it! I hate it in Aragon, I hate it in Twilight, and I haven't read the, th the um, what is it called? A Thor, uh, uh, um, a Kumaf, this thing, I have not read it. I will never touch that book. But I've heard, you know, what happens to the human protagonist girl. Why the fuck does it have to happen? Why? <laughs> and if it happens, like, okay, if you get transformed, like, okay, in some, in, in some cases it makes sense. But what I hate is when there are no repercussions to being a, um, being a magical creature or being transformed into a magical creature. For example, if you're going to be transformed into a vampire, there need to be repercussions. You can't just be like yourself, just stronger, better, sexier, sparklier. It, no. There need to be repercussions. You need to kind of, I don't know, lose a part of your soul or something like that. There, there need to be repercussions to this kind of transformation because basically what that says is that first off, disabilities, people with disabilities are useless and can't be protagonists. Um, and it also says that humans are so boring, so we need to be a special fairy person and a special elf person to, you know, accomplish anything. <laughs> a human person can't accomplish anything. And I, I don't know, I just I hate it. It's boring. And it, it, it kind of, it feels like it makes the protagonist so boring as well, because now they are like super magical and super strong and can do anything and nothing is dangerous anymore. And it also just takes the tension out a little bit is what I feel with most stories that I've, that I've read. And lastly, the last stereotype that I have to complain about in this video of ranting and complaining is what I call the pop culture stereotypes. I mean, come on, I'm a writer, I'm allergic to cliché, I'm sorry, I'm just allergic, it makes my nose, my nose run and my eyes just be very red and watery and I I can't breathe and you know you get the picture right 
And with that I mean like the sexy vampires stereotype or the beautiful fairies or the rough swordsmen. And I just hate that. I hate cliché. I hate her. And it's so, so predominant I feel like in fantasy that every other book that I read is just like a culmination of clichés. Um, and I just, man. I mean, I get it. You need to give you you need to give the reader something that is recognizable, but you know, it's a, it's a fine line between, you know, just between being cliche and being just enough recognizable, but still doing your own thing, your own your own thing, without alienating the readers. It feels so good to have this off my chest finally. Oh. <laughs> that was like therapy for me. <laughs> so thank you all of you who listened to my complaining and my ranting. Thank you. Um, I do realize that some of these pet peeves might or might not, you know, also true for other genres. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I, I love fantasy. So these are my fantasy pet peeves. Um, <laughs> so thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you'd like, tell me one of your fantasy pet peeves in the comments below. I would love to hear or tell me if you agree with my pet peeves or if you disagree with my pet peeves. Um, <laughs> so thank you for listening to my ranting and complaining. And I hope you read something wonderful, beautiful, magical. And yeah, I will see you soon. Bye!